Okay, here's a quick example to talk about um, the principles of, of chess. This is a 10 plus 0 game that I played as black pieces against um, this individual with the white pieces. 10 plus 0 means 10 minutes cumulative per side, and then the 0 seconds increment is added for each player after each person makes each move. That's just the, the style of game I played. In any event, my opponent leads off with his king's pawn. Again, controlling the center. This is an excellent move. I refute standard move, controlling the center. I do not know this opening that he's playing. Um, Lee Chess says this is the Vienna game. I do not know the Vienna game. I don't know the principles of the Vienna game. So I'm throwing out these opening theories and I'm just gonna play a principled game. So principles state that I'm gonna move my pieces, get my pieces involved and control the center. So I make the next move getting my piece involved i'm defending my pawn so my pawn that i pushed is now defended by this he makes another move one of the principles is do not move up, um, your pawns unless you have to i do not have to move this pawn it is defended if he decides to capture i don't have to move it secondly one of the principles is do not move pieces more than once i've already moved that pawn so i'm not going to move it again one of the other principles, develop, develop, develop. So I'm going to make just a standard developing move. This gets my knight out into the, into the world, and everybody's happy. Now my opponent makes an unprincipled move by moving his pawn again. So he has now made three pawn moves. Pawn, pawn, pawn. I have made one, and now I'm going to make a second. Again, this is just a standard principle move, getting my pawn out, controlling the center, Notice that this pawn is already defended by that knight that I moved earlier. So this is a very standard principled opening. He decided to capture. I already had that piece defended. Now if we go back up a second, you'll notice he actually is my pawn here. He's attacking it once, twice. Now I happen to have it defended once, twice. So I'm safe. If he chooses to capture, I'm safe. So I do not have to move anything. He goes ahead and captures. I capture back. He captures, I capture back. Now you notice, after all of this, we are even on material. But when we look at the board, I have two pieces developed. He has no pieces developed. It's not a huge advantage at this point in time, but it is a minor advantage, something to think about. He goes and makes another move. Very principled move here. He got his piece out. His pawn was undefended. So that defends that pawn. I make an unprincipled move. I move a piece that I had already moved previously. I made an extra pawn move, but it does a couple of things. Number one, if you go back, notice that this pawn is now defended by that bishop and it's attacked by, by this bishop. See that attack there? By moving this pawn up, I introduce another attacker to this pawn. So now I have two attackers in his pawn. I block the defense of this and the simple move attacks his bishop. So I'm using a lesser piece to attack a greater piece, and I'm also getting some free attacks over here. So in essence, I might have just won a pawn. The other thing it does is I make, I have to move this pawn twice, right? So I have now moved it a second time. He has to move this bishop a second time, and he doesn't have a lot of places to move it to. You notice this bishop can go, well, it can't go there. It can go here. It cannot go here. So it can go there, or it can go back, or it can go all the way back. Those are the only moves that bishop can make. So by moving that pawn, I have forced him to lose tempo on that bishop. So I lose tempo, he loses tempo, but I also gain this double attack. I don't know how to undo these marks. Oh, there it goes, good. Ha. He moves his bishop all the way back. So now we look at the game. I make another principled move, I move a piece, I capture that pawn, I now have all of this development to his no development. Now the game is not won or loss at this point in time. It is just showing that I am taking incremental advantages by using these basic principles. I do not know this person's strategy, I do not know what their, their goal is, but I'm just doing some basic principles following the tenets 
He's attacking my queen. I have to defend my queen. And in reality, I want to move my queen out of the way. I broke principle by moving my queen early. So I'm going to safely move it back and just hide it out of the way. He makes another decent move. I have one piece that has not been developed here. So I'd like to go ahead and develop that piece. I find a nice square for it. Now it is an undefended piece, but it's not being attacked yet. And I have several safe squares that I can hide it if I need to. And notice this square is safe as well. So I am safe if I have to hide this piece away, but at the same time, I do want to keep an eye on it. It's an undefended piece. My back rank is clear. He's made a nice move. I'm safe. I'm going to go ahead and castle. This is, at this point in time, I can castle either side. Notice my nice wall of pawns here, my nice wall of pawns here. I could castle queen side, or I could castle king side. I don't know which is the best way in this point in time. I don't have a particular strategy of one way or the other. But if I go back to the principles, the principle will say, if you can't pick, if there's no real reason to choose one side over the other, just do a standard castle. So I did standard castle. At this point in time, my development is complete. I am fully developed. All of my pieces are involved in the game. This piece is not protected. So I need to protect that piece at some point in time. I have accomplished everything I want to out of the opening of chess. So I don't have a strategy. I don't know where I'm going to attack this guy. I don't know what I need to do to defend against his attacks. So I'm going to stick with the principles. The principles are the reason we control the center is because pieces in the center have a ton of um, options open to them. So I'm going to go ahead and move that piece up. Notice it is defended, even though this is undefended. So I need to keep that in mind. At which point in time, he makes a great move. I, I should have seen this coming. He has pinned my bishop. My bishop cannot go anywhere else at this point in time. He is attacking through my bishop to my queen, which my queen is only defended by that bishop. If that bishop goes away, my queen is undefended. I, I could choose to do several things at this point in time. Um, notice this bishop is defended by this knight. So I could leave that bishop alone, but again, I don't have a plan at this point in time. I am up one pawn, only one pawn am I up. So this game is still going strong. I don't have um, a strategy one way or the other. Trading at this point in time is not necessary, but I'm just going with, I don't have a plan, so I'm just gonna go for it. So I make a quick trade, I take his bishop. This was probably a mistake in my point because he could have moved his queen out there and that could have been scary for me. Um, so probably my least favorite point in this particular game was that right there. But I'm gonna stop, uh, actually I'll keep going. Uh, at this point in time, again, I still don't have a strategy, I still don't have a plan, but I do note that my king is safe. I have these pawns here in a nice wall. He's got pawns here in a nice wall. If I could get some trades and start busting open the position over here, maybe I could find some way to get involved. So my first thought is let me start setting up another pawn chain of my own. I'm thinking I'm gonna push this guy up here and then see if I can start breaking down this particular structure. I don't really know if it's gonna work, but I'm just gonna try something because I don't know what to do. He makes a move here that I don't like. Now, this pawn move is unnecessary. It is now an undefended pawn. And for me on the defender side of it, I don't like pawns in front of my king. A pawn up front of my king with his queen still on the board could spell checkmate. And so I really want to be very careful. So I'm going to stop this pawn's movement. Another thing I notice, again, it's undefended. I have a dark square bishop. If this particular guy is frozen on this block, I have some options as far as attacking it multiple ways. So that's just what I do. I just freeze it. My king is now safe. I can hide it up here if I need to. Um, I can hide it over here if I need to. My king is still safe. I'm fine. He goes to attack this knight. Again, that's a great move on his part. He, he has attacking my knight, but my knight is defended once, twice. This pawn is still undefended. So my next move, I realize my knight is defended. I don't really need to defend it twice. So I can slide this guy over here and attack this, this pawn. So now I am, again, principal strategies are Here's an undefended piece that he's been pushing around. If I capture it, he's lost a lot of tempo by moving it multiple times just to get it captured. 
He goes and takes. I go ahead and take. Here's another move on his part. He does not need to make this move. Note, I have one, two attackers on this pawn. He only has one defender of that pawn. So I have an opportunity here that he gave me. He didn't need to give me this opportunity, but because he gave me this opportunity, I have a couple of choices. Number one, I could push past. I could push this pawn past and make it scary. Again, that pawn in front of his king with a queen sitting around is a very scary opportunity because checkmates happen. Um, what I choose to do instead is I choose to capture. I'm keeping it simple. I'm a very conservative player. I'm going to keep it simple. So I capture. He now makes a phenomenal move. I did not see this coming. He moves his knight. This is a perfect principled move. Gets his knight into the game with tempo because he is now attacking my queen. And at the same time, he's defending that undefended pawn. Perfect principled move. Um... If he had done more of these early in the game, this game would have been a lot closer. Or I should say, it would have not felt as good to me as it did. At this point in time, uh, my goal is to get this queen. I get a free check out of it. Now I've got two attackers in this pawn. He, he would need to somehow add another defender to it. And then I don't listen to my own advice at this point in time. And from here on out, um, the game, we have now moved into the end game. And my end game skills are not great. But what I do know is I have a queen and a pawn in front of his king. The only defender he's got is this queen and the king itself. So I have an opportunity either to snatch another pawn. I would probably lose my pawn in the process, though. See, if, he, if I take here and then he takes there... Now I take back, making the material even. I'm up a pawn, but then he just takes and he's he evens it back out. So I don't really have a huge opportunity, so I'm gonna just move us into an end game. This is a very dangerous configuration, but he's got his queen there to save the day. So he takes, I take back, and then he just takes. Now at this point in time, we are fully in an end game. Um, the opening principles I discussed are all about opening the game, but you notice that I feel very comfortable about this game. My king is tucked away safe, nice here. I've got plenty of option to hide my king. Um, I've got a great bishop that I can still get into the game somehow. Um, I've got lots of squares options for my bishop. I can either move it over here, I can move it here, I can move it here. I mean, I've got this whole thing I can do to get my bishop involved. My rook, all my rook has to do is, again, what are the principles of the rooks? Rooks are defending themselves, and if you have an opportunity, line it up with the king, look at my next move, boom. Line my rook up with his king, Everybody's safe. Everybody's happy. He's got a little bit of configuration issues he's got to work out, all because we stuck to the principles. I am not saying I'm great at chess. I'm just saying I stuck to the principles. This was not a theory-based game because I don't know the theory of whatever this was called, the Vienna game. I just stuck to the principles. So that's why we rely heavily on the principles when we get a chance.